Hi, welcome to the Station Notions podcast, a knitting, spinning, fibre craft and general chit chat about life podcast coming to you from Backers Marsh in Victoria, Australia. My name is Penelope and you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram as Miss Red Pen. Today is Tuesday the 1st of November and this is episode 7 of the podcast that stopped a nation. Uh, grab yourself something fun to drink, you're knitting and let's have a chat. How are you going? I, um, I hope you've had a great couple of weeks since I last posted an episode. I do apologise for regular viewers for not getting an episode published on the weekend that's just gone. Um, it was one of those weekends of best laid plans where everything went awry and um, realising that today was a public holiday I thought I'd just cut my losses and get it done today. So here we are. Um, today's episode we're going to cover off on on the rack. I've got a finished object to share a um, work in progress, so a couple of stash stories and oh yes of course the podcast Knit Along came to a close on the weekend and we're going to draw some prize winners at the end of the episode. So I think without any further ado let's jump into the first segment. This first segment is on the rack where I talk about, briefly talk about what I'm wearing. And today, since it is Melbourne Cup Day here in Victoria, a public holiday here and a little bit of a fun time around the rest of the country, that I thought I would put on a nice new dress and give a shout out once again to one of my favourite plus size fashion designers, Hope and Harvest. Uh, they're based about 50 or 60 kilometres due west from here in Ballarat and this is a new dress which has just become available on their online website for purchase. It was around for pre-order for a little while as well and it's a really interesting dress. Um, I should look up the name of it but I will pop that in the comments, show notes pop it in the show notes so that you can see it if you're interested in it. So I'm wearing the size medium which says on the label it's for 16 to 18 but um, I think you probably need to size down again um, for international viewers 16 Australian 16 to 18 is like a US 14 to 16 um, size 16, 18, 20 in the UK so you can get an idea of what I'm wearing here but probably could have gone down again to the small. Um, I had actually ordered the large and I got contacted by Harvest the designer and said oh you might want to size down. It's a little bit reluctant but glad we did because the large would have been way way too big. But um, check out the sleeves, nice kimono style sleeves which are a bit butterfly like when you put both of them out so I like that. Um, good for lounging around on hot summer days, lots of room to move um, if summer ever actually arrives let me tell you I thought we were going to have a nice couple of days and then bang back to rain. The sun is shining now but for how long? Who knows? Yes so as I said before it's Melbourne Cup Day. That is one of the these really unusual Australian anomalies where it's called the race that stops a nation and it, it really does. There's a few pockets of the country I guess that maybe don't but um, here in Victoria most places it's a public holiday and um, there's a few exceptions to that like if they have another public holiday nearby for a different event like um, a different race or a show holiday or something. Um, I'm not sure how that works. And in, well at least in Queensland, I can't say about other states, um, in the public service we had Melbourne Cup lunches on the day and you know there'd be a bit of a sweepstake around the office and we'd have chicken and salad and champagne, pause to watch the race and then sometimes we'd go back to work and sometimes we would probably 
you know, just climb off to the pub, depending on how the day went and how lucky you were in your particular little flutter. And the horse that I drew came dead last, so um, I do actually get a little bit of my sweepstake entry back for that. Not all of it, but um, that's the risk you take with gambling, I guess. Gamble responsibly, people. That's all I have to say on that. And let's move on to the next segment. I only have one finished object to show you today. As I kind of mentioned before, it's been a strange couple of weeks for me. I've just been a little bit out of sorts, a little bit stressed, a little bit down, and not anything I can... I don't know why the focus just jumps then, but let's try that again. I, like I was saying, yeah, I don't know why I'm out of sorts, nothing in particular. Maybe it's just there's a lot going on at work at the moment, and I've been pretty tired and not really putting as much time into crafting as I usually do. So my rate of production has been a little bit slower than normal, and I'm pretty slow at the best of times anyway, but. Um, it just happens sometimes, you know, you've just got to sink down, hit the bottom before you can bounce back up again and be on your merry way. So I think I've come out of the woods, thankfully, and it's not, wasn't too much of a down period. And now let me show you what I have actually done. So it's close enough to finish to be actually called finished. These are some little um, corseted mitts, that's the name of the pattern, by Karima Spencer on Ravelry. Um, and this is how it looks. Let's get it straight. So um, it's a super quick knit. It took me a couple of days. Um, I think I started it on the Thursday and finished it on the weekend. Um, and then lacing through the ribbon and attaching buttons to stop the yarn from knit um, coming out. And this one I made it for the woolen vine and I forgot the name of the other person's Victoriana knit along. So I thought this was kind of a bit of a nod in that direction with the corset tree. The yarn is um, Madeline Tosh worsted weight. So Madeline uh, Tosh vintage. Here's the ball band. And it is the mineral colorway, and it's showing up a little more blue on the screen than what it is in real life. It's, it's, a, it's a solid proper teal. <laughs> no surprises there, really. Um, and I used less than half of the ball, and it was on the 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, as, it, as always, I just went up a size from what the pattern suggested for the small and pretty much got gauge and it is a perfect fit for me um, very stretchy bind off there and the thumb gusset works really well on my hands so I would recommend this pattern as one for a sort of you know not brand new beginner but someone who's ready to try to have a challenge with knitting in the round um, I did this on magic loop and I think I'm beginning to understand why people like Magic Loop over DPN's double pointed needles. Um, and like I said, it's it's um it's got you know a little bit of lace work there and plus some increases and binding off mid-round for the thumb gusset. So yes, definitely check that one out if you are a newbie who's wanting to try something a little bit more challenging. And um, if you if you have bigger hands, though, you can go up, make the pattern bigger just by sizing up. But again, check your gauge. You might want to maybe instead of using a worse weight, go for which is 10 ply in Australia. Maybe knit it on a 12. Or, hang on, no, worsted is 12 ply. You might want to go up to like a bulky weight, 14 or 16 ply, and knit it on say five and a half millimeter needles depending on your gauge and you probably get something just as comfortable like I said yeah for much bigger hands it is 
on the inside you can see here it is um, ribbed so there is quite a bit of give in there and this one is this is not quite finished I've still got to sew the buttons on and to do the finishing so but not too far off and that's pretty much all I've done for this one this time so let's move on to the next segment This next segment is what's in progress and I've just got two things to show you today which are follow-ons from the previous episode. The first one is the Tempest cardigan that I finally pulled out of the UFO pile and started working on again. I'm still seaming. Remember how much I said I hate seaming? Well it's true, nothing much has changed but I have made progress. The second side is now all seamed and I'm part way through the second sleeve so as soon as that is done I can start picking up on the bands and get it finished so um, it might be ready to wear very very soon. Let's aim for this to be a finished object by the time we record again. <laughs> I was going to say if it takes me a while to produce my next episode that's why but no we will get back on schedule and we will get it done for next time. Yes see me <laughs> okay so the other one which is still being housed in this cute little bag that I picked up in covert last year is the socks that once again I've forgotten the name and the pattern and I'm terrible at writing these things down you would think that's seven episodes in I would know what I'm doing in terms of getting organized for, for podcasts and show notes and things um Let's just cheat pop over to my rav page, rav page while I'm here. Um, Marama. That's it. Marama from the Big Foot Knits pattern book. Um, there's the stitch marker from two weeks ago. Let's see and bring that in. So I have made a sizable bit of progress. Um, not as much as I would have liked, but like I said, I haven't really been knitting as much as... I would have liked to and we are I think we're about 10 rows away from um, pausing and knitting the heel gusset and moving on up the leg so that's exciting um, again I'm still working away off the off the sock blank as I was going um, I have come very very close to winding it up into those two rolls but um, I don't think I will. Now, um, someone might be able to give me a bit of a pointer on this, but I have been doing it on the two circulars, but I am getting ladders in between. Oh, of course I'm not getting them anymore, am I? There's a little bit of a ladder or gap coming up between the front and the back of the socks. I don't know if it means I'm not pulling my yarn tight enough as I go around or I'm missing part of the technique. I am just basically knitting the fronts on one needle and the backs on two needles. Should I be moving it into looping it around from time to time to get that tension right? I don't know but um, any suggestions you have to help me get a better product I will definitely take those on board. I am getting ready to cast on a new project. One of the ones I mentioned last time which is the Stephen West show, not the doodler, the other one, Exploration Station. Um, I've got my, my four skeins of yarn picked out now so um, let's just pull these out. These, these are the four yarns that I'm going to do it in. I'm going to very shortly wind them off and get ready to go. So the first one is Mayhem and Chaos and this is the Rockstar base which is Merino Silk Nylon and the colorway is October Grey. Then we have the Woolen Vine Yarn in the Enjoy the Silence colorway on her Narwhal base which is BFL, Blue Faced Leicester, Cashmere and Silk. Then Tosh Merino Light, which is just a superwash merino. And that colorway is Cold Seam. So it's a, you know, a darker red, sorry, maroon, gray, purple colorway. And then last but not least, I'm going off with the 
This is a merino silk again from Yarn vs Zombies in the sitting room colourway which was one that I got from Downton Abbey Yarn Club. Um, must have been four or five years ago so I've had that one for a while. I think we are ready to um, rock star and roll. <laughs> um, so that's going to be fun because it'll be a new stitch for me learning how to do brioche. Um, but yeah, yeah, some of the other ones will look beautiful and I think those four colours will go together well and there's enough variation in the depths and the tones that we should, it should work well. Um, I think that'll be a bit of fun. I've never really done something that's had so many different variations in it either. I tend to be a little bit conservative. So this is quite possibly the most out there colour combination that I've done for a project. Um, we'll see how we go. Come back in a fortnight and say, no, stop it. I've ripped it out. I'm going to study again. But that's what, what happens. Anyway, um, I think that is all for works in progress and let's move on. Dash stories. Um, for those of you who did watch the previous episode, you may recall that I mentioned I was going yarn shopping afterwards to find the elusive third colour for the Stephen West Doodle shawl that I'm planning to make using um, Woolen Vines Outlander colorway and more Mayhem and Chaos Rockstar in this green which reminds me very much of tartan colors. Um, so I went off to Yarn & Co which is a um, little boutique store that's based in Fitzroy um, which is near Melbourne CBD and I met up with a lovely knitter who was down in Melbourne um, doing a work placement so it was nice to hang and chat and we went and um, I picked out this colour while I was there I thought it would be a good match. It is from The Fibre Company which is a brand I quite like anyway. It's their, their Meadow colourway, sorry, Meadow Base in the Lady Slipper colourway. Um, Meadow is a base of baby llama, silk, linen and merino wool um, and I, don't know, I got home and I just didn't love it with all of these together. I thought it was just a little too dark like I needed something that sits in between the green and I'd really like to find something that is kind of in these peachy nudie tones like let's see the colours are pretty good representation right now. So um, where is it? I'm just for the screen. Um, this one here is looking a little more beige than. Uh, or here we go. Yeah, just kind of that soft peachy colour. There, that's kind of what I'd like. And so I, I spent hours hours and hours on Etsy so I'm looking through all the different um, dyes across the globe because um, I wanted something that still had silk or cashmere in it to, to keep the you know, luxurious feel of this um, project that I'm looking for going and I have ordered a couple of things but who knows how long it's going to take for them to come in the post so we'll just wait. So in the meantime I have got this skein of dark purpley browny yarn that I now have no idea what I'm going to go with, do with it. Um, I guess I'll find something in the future. If not, it can go into deep stash. And I did pick up another yarn skein while I was there and this was a brand that has been on my lust list for a very long time because everyone who's worked with it has said such amazing things about it and it is Hedgehog Fibres. This is a twisted sock base, so um, in the Monet colorway. So yes, yes, it's more aqua with some blues and purples and little speckles of brown in there, I guess, to create some reminiscence of the water lilies painting. Um, and it is a blue face Lester and nylon. So um, 
I don't know what we'll, I'll be using this one for. It's just going to go into Stash and I'm sure at some point there will be a project that comes up that just says that's what you're going to be. So let's hold that up again so you can see it a little, little more. A little, little more completeness, I guess. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this one as well because you know Hedgehog Hive Fiverr. Anytime you go to the website, everything is completely sold out, and I guess that's what happens when you're a really good dyer and everyone knows who you are and popularity, I guess. Um, so yes, yay, one more off the bucket list. There's a few more left. Um, maybe I should write a blog post listing what they, they are and why I want them. Uh, enough rambling about that. I guess it is time to move on to the last segment for this episode, which is going well, drawing prizes, yay! Be, before I draw the names for the prize winners for the knit along, I thought I would take a moment to pause and thank everyone who participated in the knit along. It, it's been really wonderful seeing what you've been working on and sharing your pictures and stories with me, both in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. So um, decided I'm going to draw four prizes now. So one for Ravel refinished objects thread, one for Instagram pictures and lastly two from the chatter thread. The Instagram and finished objects I am drawing separately, um, one for each group um, using names that I've printed out or written out names and put on paper. So the first one, there's one for each of them. We're going to shake it up in this little stray cat bag and reach in. And the first one for the winner is Socorana. Well done Socorana. So um, I might throw in a little bit of an extra something with that one given that you finished your project as well. So do send me your contact details and I will get your prize in the post. Um, Alright, now we're going to put in all the names from Ravelry, sorry, Instagram. There's a whole bunch in there and I did, there was another, another knit along make along happening at the same time with a very similar hashtag and it looks like a couple of people did, did mess up and used my hashtag when they met the other one so we um, I excluded those because you know they're not watching the podcast anyway so they're not gonna know. Right again we're doing a, we're doing a good shuffle. All right here we go. Ha huh. and the winner there. Oh Ms. Allegria yay well done and congratulations and thank you for participating as well. And then last but not least I'm going to go over to random.org here on the website. Okay, bringing it up now. Um, if things look a bit weird to you while I'm doing this, it's because I can't see what I'm filming anymore. Random.org, let's type that in. Okay, there we go. Now, if I bring up one of my own comments, it is going to be um, the one closest above it. But the minimum is 2, maximum is 21. Generate a result. It is number 4. Should I be putting in a screenshot? No, I'll put in a screenshot. Okay, number 4. Let's see who that is. Doop, doop, doop. Ravelry. Back over to the list. One, two, three, four. Oh, hey, it's Tans Crafty Knits. Congratulations. Okay, right. Well, oh, hang on. We've got a second one to go, don't we? Yes, second one. Okay. Um, number 13. Let's see who that is. Oh, hey, it's me. <laughs> so, ah, uh, that's... 
it's Socorena again. So, Socorena, you've got two coming to you. Well done. Um, once again, congratulations to everyone who participated and thank you again. And we might try this again at some point in the future. Just as a reminder of what you've won, you have won packages that are up now, one of my little stashed notion packs, which is a little tin that I put a base liner in. Um, there is a row counter stitch marker, there's a needle inside the tin which is secured with a magnet, a little pair of snips and a measuring tape and of course the blinglets which are made by Fiberific. So yes, um, that was fun. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much. And let's let's wrap things up. And that brings us to the end of yet another episode. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, or join the Ravelry group. Um, actually, do join the Ravelry group. Drop by and say hi. Um, and yeah, if you've got any questions or things you'd like to know, please, please feel free to ask either drop a line in the Ravelry group or send me a message or comment below and yeah I think that's it so again thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!